uh, Naren, uh, there is a um, grassroots movement uh, of, of dentists all over the country, quite literally. And all, you know, we, we get inquiries from, from dentists from all 50 states. Yes. Um, and they've just had it with PPO plans. They've just had it. You know, I received an email the other day from a doctor that said, you know, Gary, I don't, the administrative burden that I'm under on these PPO plans, you know, he named, a, he, he said, you know, Aetna, for example, they're denying claims that have been routinely paid in the past. They're asking for an, a ridiculous amount of information that is, is, is not needed. Uh, the administrative burden is just ridiculous. So you combine that with the fact that they're lowering fees, you know, PPO yes. plans are, because they got to keep paying the fat cats. You know, they got to pay, the pay the bad cats. The they're, they're, yeah. you know, they're multi-million dollar annual compensation packages. Right. So in order to do that, uh, they have to uh, pay you less. They're also being bombarded by companies and the employers who buy the policies. And this goes for, you know, every PPO plan out there, whether it's Delta, Aetna, Travelers, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, United Concordia, United Healthcare. Companies are reaching out to them. And they're saying, we want to continue as a client of yours, providing dental insurance benefits for our employees, but we want to pay lower premiums. Because remember, remember that inflationary cycle that we're in? Yes. What are companies trying to do? Trying to, to, to keep their overhead under control. Yes. So they're saying, we want to continue to offer benefits, dental insurance benefits, because it's a way for us to attract and keep quality employees. But we want to pay lower premiums. And guess what? The administrators of the insurance companies say, "Sure, we can help you with that." There, you know. So think about this for a minute, guys. If you're listening to this podcast, who's going to get the haircut? Is the is the CEO going to say, "Hey, I'll give up a few million dollars in in, in annual salary to uh, to offer more attractive premiums to X Y Z company"? No. <laughs> uh, so what they're what they're doing is, hey, hey, we can design a plan with lower premiums and and. The way they do that is just kick you in the gut right. <laughs> and drop your fees. Right. Uh, so I used to get more questions like, you know, can I do this? Can I successfully drop PPO plans? And now the question is a little bit more, it's, it's pivoted. It's a little bit, hey, how quickly can I do this? Is there any chance I could do this by the end of the year? which I find very interesting because it, it, it makes me think that a lot of doctors are already thinking, okay, I can do this, but I want to do it as quick as, as possible. So now it's a matter of, can I do it within this window, you know, instead of, can I do it at all? Uh, I think that's a wonderful shift that shows more and more dentists thinking, okay, I think I can do this. And I hope maybe our podcast is uh, uh, providing some encouragement and case studies and examples of, of how in fact you can do that. Well, at the time that we're going to publish this, you'll, you'll have, uh, actually, almost nine months, near, uh, early April. Uh, it's That's going to be true. published April 6th. So almost nine months. Um, and the answer to that question, can you successfully, and I'm putting in the context of the time that we're recording this. You know, if you have nine months between now and the end of the year, uh, roughly nine months, a little bit less, a week less than that, um, can, can you do this by the end of the year? The answer is absolutely, you can. And you don't um, mean that completely be out of network, but you mean start the process and get- No, I, I actually mean process. at the finish line, Oh, okay. uh, completely out of network. Now, remember, we call it reducing insurance dependence as opposed right. to going uh, completely fee for service. And the reason why we call it reducing insurance dependence is, is that you do not have to go all the way to fee for service to see significant improvement and benefits in your practice. If you start out with a dozen plans and you, you successfully drop 11 of them, and, and then you get down to one, you know, that's left, your practice will be, uh, will see significant improvement for that. Now, with that said, if your goal is to go fee for service, then I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader because this is, you know, going fee for service is the way to get the full benefit from this. So can I, you know, at the time of publication of this, can I uh, get completely out of network by the end of the year? The answer is yes. Absolutely. The answer is yes. Now, I should have um, prefaced that <clears throat> with my usual answer to a question is it depends <laughs> because it does depend. If, if you're starting out with 35 plans, then we might need a little bit more time than that. Right. Might need a little bit, a little bit more time. But what we see most commonly today, Naren, is that offices are in anywhere from say uh, 10 to 20 plans, 10 to 20 plans. And sometimes it's a few more because of the umbrella status of some of those plans. Like United Healthcare will have five or six under there. So maybe they think they're in, you know, 
uh, 15 plans, and it turns out they're actually in 22 because of the umbrella nature of some of those plans. And, and you know, while that's a, a higher number, absolutely you can. You can uh, do this. And the reason I can say that so confidently, Naren, we've done it. We've done right. it with our clients. And we've done it successfully. You know, we're not, it's not just a matter of, okay, let me just drop them all and see what happens. No, no, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very carefully calculated, you know, blueprint that we're following. It's a very uh, strategic set of preparation to do.